Hi, we're Team Ada. I'm Harleen, this is Prana, Romina, Sarah, and Victoria, and our presentation is on gender and stimulant use. After we finished the ADA, we built a boosting model to predict the DASD category score. In the model, we included demographic variables such as gender, age, health, location, region, marital status, income, and education level, as well as indicator variables relating to healthcare settings, as well as in prescription authorization. We also included variables relating to prescription drug use, such as whether the respondent has ever used a certain drug, as well as variables relating to chronic pain, tobacco use, and alcohol consumption. We didn't use variables relating to the misuse of drugs because we were worried about potential data leakage. We wanted to predict the DASD category or essentially how severe the user symptoms are, and we assumed that a healthcare professional would have access to a patient's medical records, demographic info and profession, but not whether they've misused their prescription drugs. We treated the variables as categorical variables, and after tuning our model to look at the shop values, we've got the shop summary plot here, and as you can see, the three variables with the most impact were age, gender, and tobacco use. Of these three, gender interested us the most because but the gender data was balanced with an equal number of male and female respondents, which wasn't true for the different age groups. We also assumed the tobacco and the use or misuse of drugs would have high correlation, so we thought we would present a novel approach. So one of the big questions we decided to address was, would gender have a big impact on prescription drug misuse? And in order to analyze this, we went about it a couple of different ways. We started off in Python, where we looked at start stacked bar graphs. So we looked at one drug at a time. We had a column for males and a column for females. So in the bars, we had the number of users of that drug, and then above it, in a different color, we had the misuses of that drug. Now, we quickly realized that this was very misleading to the reader because you would intuitively think, OK, so if these bars are the same size, then they're misusing it at the same rate. However, if you factor in prescriptions, this isn't true. If you've got 10 prescriptions and two misuses in females, and you've got five prescriptions and two misuses in males, you've really got a 20% misuse rate versus a 40% misuse rate. And that's very much not the same. It's nearly double. So we decided to move along with using percentages instead of uh, the particular misuses of by gender uh, versus the total number of uses by that gender. And you can see that in the first graph on the slide. What our data analysis suggested was that the males tended to misuse the drugs for all of them, whether they were prescribed it more so than females and whether they were prescribed it less so than females. We then decided to look at healthcare workers and see if it was a microcosm of the larger society. We thought this was an interesting analysis because healthcare workers, they know more about these drugs and their effects, and some of them can even prescribe it to themselves. Now, one of the biggest problems we ran into here was a smaller sample size. We went from having 10,000 individuals to 425 individuals. So because of that reason, we decided to only focus on drugs where there were 10 or more users for, from each gender. And this is still a small number, but based on the numbers we had, it made sense as a cutoff point. So here we ultimately found the same trend where males tend to misuse drugs more so than the females, with two exceptions, and those are stimulants and benzodiazepines. So as Raleigh mentioned, when comparing the misuse of drugs in general by gender versus the misuse of drugs by gender specific to healthcare professionals, benzodiazepine and stimulants stand out by having higher female misuse among healthcare professionals than in otherwise male misuse. We focus particularly on stimulants due to a much visible difference, as well as despite an almost equal representations of males and females using it, female misuse is twice than that of male misuse. Now, there are multiple reasons that could support these observations. Stimulants which speed up the communication between the brain and the body, they assist in making one more energetic, confident, and alert. Now, being in a healthcare profession, which not only requires working in high-pressure environment, but also the educational journey behind it needs a lot of time and dedication. Females may tend to feel more pressured at work, which may lead them to resort to the misuse. Further, due to an easier access to these drugs, females may tend to misuse it more, as statistically, they might also... Uh, we've seen that they manage domestic responsibilities more frequently than males alongside working professionally. So to efficiently juggle between all these duties and the workplace pressure that they might feel, they might uh, resort to the misuse. Again, all of these are plausible reasons that can contribute to this observation, but to find out more, we decided to focus more on other aspects of stimulants, specifically to see if we can find any other critical piece of information. To observe the geographical distribution of stimulant use and misuse, we generated one map for each topic. In order to develop these maps, we first sorted the data according to the forward sortation area, or FSA, which is the first half of the postal code. This allowed us to obtain the total number of instances of use and misuse for various drugs. In order to generate a visual representation of the geographical distribution of drug use and misuse, we used QGIS together with data from Statistics Canada to create a map of all the FSAs in Canada. Since stimulants were of particular interest to us, we were able to use the QGIS program in conjunction with the data provided to generate a choropleth map of stimulant use and misuse across the country. 
Looking at the geographical distribution, we do see that cities tend to have higher usage and misuse of stimulants. This may be due to busier, high-pressure lifestyles being more prevalent in cities, but due to our limited sample size, we realize that more research is required to be able to confirm this with confidence. The same follows for more specific demographics, such as healthcare workers, students, and veterans. Stronger conclusions and patterns about prescription drug misuse can be determined if each of these variables have a higher representation. So where do we go from here? Well, first, we recommend that a model, similar, similar to the one highlighted in the beginning, should be utilized to further investigate the predictive power of the top variables in determining the likelihood of one misusing prescription drugs. We can find applications in public health, for example, determining where and who should be receiving more addiction supports slash resources. Another application can be found in health insurance and provincial health ministries, as in determining which drugs should get more or less coverage. Another recommendation that we have is to determine why exactly are men misusing at a higher rate than women. We recommend that a follow-up survey should be conducted on reasons for getting into slash taking prescription drugs for non-medical use with a specific focus on childhood development and its impact on this topic. Esteemed judges, thank you for your time and consideration.